Let's talk about investment. Well, first of all, what are these things called investments and why would you want to do an investment? Why would you want to invest in any way, shape or form? Um, an investment is something that you buy that helps you make money even when you're not working for that money yourself. And so I'll give you an example. When you get up in the morning and you go to the office, you go to work at nine. You work hard, you make money, right? You're earning a living. It's called earned income. And so you leave work at six and you feel like you had a good day. And you come back home and you play with your family and your friends. You've worked for eight hours. Your earning capacity stops. There's 16 other hours out there that you're not making any money. Why? What if I was to tell you there's a way you can make money during those 16 hours that you're not earning an income. Again, earning an income means going into work at nine, leaving at six, feeling like you did a great job, which you probably did, and going home. So there's a way. You can not just make money while you're working, but you can also make money while you're not working. The way to do that, the way I do it, the way my very wealthy clients do it, and the way even not so many wealthy clients, not, not, not even just the wealthy, but people who um, aspire to be wealthy, people who aspire to make more than they have, people who want something better for themselves more than they currently have, um, the way they do it is by buying an investment. Now, we're not talking about specifics of investments right now. We'll get there. I just want to help you understand, you know, give you a frame of reference about what an investment is. And, you know, people hear about investments and they get scared. You know, oh, I'm going to lose money. And I don't want to do that. It's a scam. You know, they, you know, people get, you know, a little reticent. Um, you can, you know, it's not, you know, for any everyone. You know, some people live their life and they, you know, they put their money under the pillow uh, or under their bed. And they live happily. I mean, I'm from Africa. I got a lot of people who don't trust banks. And they do that. They put their money on. Some of them, you know, they live happily ever after. If that's what you want, um, then you can do that. But you don't need to. You can make your money work for you by purchasing investments. But you have to put something towards the investment. You can't just um, wake up and own an investment or own a stock or own a piece of real estate or own a bond or own gold. You have to actually go to work. That's why you got to get a job. If you do have a job and you are making money, it is very important for you not to spend all of your money. You got to take a little piece. I've talked to you again about saving. I've talked to you about saving and how important it is to the power of compounding. So if you're working and you're spending income, you're spending your money on expenses, please save a little bit of it. And that's what you use to buy investments. So now you need to put a little bit of money aside. Uh, whether that's $50 a month or, or $100 a month, it's not important. I mentioned to you some time ago that Albert Einstein once said, the greatest force on earth is the power of compounding, which means it's not how much you save that matters, it's the consistency month after month after month after year after year after year. It's the consistency of saving that gets you to be uh, wealthy. So one of the best books I ever read was called The Millionaire Next Door uh, that talked about, um, you know, many people think to be rich, you got to hit the jackpot. You got to set up a tech company, make a billion dollars. You know, you got to win a lottery. You know, you got to go be a doctor, make five, six hundred thousand dollars. Many people think wealth comes, you know, kind of like that. Well, that book, which is one of my favorite books, talked about the, the typical, the average millionaire goes to work every day, works really hard whether it's owning a dry cleaner or a diner or owning a, a, a medical practice, and it puts a little bit aside, it watches his or her expenses, puts a little bit aside and saves that in what? An investment. And it doesn't matter what the investment is. I'll tell you about what's right for you, but as long as you're saving money and investing that money, you are much better off than the guy next door because most people don't save. Americans are very bad savers. We don't like to save. We like to spend. We like houses. We like cars. We like shoes. We like Gucci. We like, you know, we like all that good stuff. You know, I like good stuff too, but look, I like to invest. I like to save. And so we've talked about the importance of, you know, getting a job or, you know, uh, starting a business, whatever it is that will bring you some money. 
we've talked about the importance of taking a little piece of that money, uh, and it doesn't matter how much, it could be $25, I promise, doesn't matter. Make sure you put that away every month in a bucket. And I'll talk to you about those buckets over the next few months. Uh, put it away in a bucket and, and, and that bucket will grow. And that's the way you get your money to work for you when you're not working for your money. That's the other 16 hours. If you're working and you're saving and you're investing, the other 16 hours are working for you. And that's the way to, to true wealth.